Welcome to Attleboro Update. With great local man in need of a kidney, receives the gift of life. Festivities for the Big Read are in full swing, and partner organization Triborough Youth Theater showed that Attleboro Welcome to Attleboro Update, where you can get the latest in what's going on in the Attleboro community. You can watch all of our content by visiting our website, doubleacs.com, by downloading the AACS mobile app, or if you have a Roku, you can search for the AACS Roku channel. In remembrance of the events of September 11th, the Attleboro Fire Department held their annual remembrance ceremony on Sunday morning at their headquarters on Union Street. We spoke with Attleboro Fire Chief Scott Lachance after the event. I'm Scott Lachance, I'm the fire chief for the city of Attleboro. We're here today for our September 11th ceremony, the annual ceremony that we've been doing now for 21 years. It's hard to believe it's been that long, but uh, we have not missed one year of the ceremony, even with COVID. Um, it was much, much smaller, obviously, and we had to do it differently, but we were still able to do it. It's an important event, and it's our promise to all of us and to the community that we won't ever forget the days and the events that happened on September 11th. Obviously, when you have um, uh, a local resident with uh, ties to some of our firefighters, it, it makes it more personal, uh, which is always difficult for us. You know, whenever we go to a call, there's always the possibility there's going to be a family member or a friend that we're there to help. So um, we're not unaccustomed to it, but when it's something that's the national level and it hits home locally, it r really causes you to never forget it. One thing that I think separates America from a lot of other countries is when there's a tragedy that we do historically rise together and put all of our differences aside. I remember the, the, the days afterwards and have never felt and still continue don't feel um, that there's ever been an event, at least in my lifetime, that brought Americans closer together. When you actually realize that we're all at risk, you know, there's dangers for all of us every day and sometimes we take that for granted and when you actually have lived through it, I think that you change the way you see the future and how you view other people and that's what I would encourage people to take from this is, while it's, it is a sad day and it's recognizing a sad event, uh, I do believe ultimately that we recovered and that it made everybody stronger as a nation and that's what I would encourage people to keep in their hearts when they think about this day. Good morning, uh, Paul Jakes, President Attleboro Firefighters Local A48. Uh, today we gathered with on and off duty members and guests for the 9-11 uh, Remembrance Ceremony, uh, 21 years, to honor those fallen on that tragic day, something we hold true. You know, as the saying goes, we never forget. Uh, and we never will. As a uh, president of the union, working with uh, Chief Lachance uh, and other members of the department setting up today's event, my role was to uh, read the firefighter's prayer, uh, something that is very traditional in the fire service. Uh, I'm sure anyone that um, knows firefighters has probably in their house uh, on a plaque somewhere a firefighter's prayer up on the wall. Um, it's just uh, something that, you know, we, um, we kind of, it's our prayer, it's obviously a firefighter's prayer. So it's something that, uh, you know, in, in our religious aspects of things and that whatever religion we use or uh, believe in, then uh, that's our prayer. That's our firefighters' prayer. 9 11 impacted everyone, not only here in Attleboro, across the state, and across the country, uh, in some form or fashion, but here in Attleboro, the special connection uh, that's there gives it even more purpose and meaning um, that we do never forget. One thing that uh, does come out of tragedy is unification uh, in the country, uh, Attleboro, Massachusetts, uh, in the nation, and even the world. Uh, has been unified, uh, not only in support of public safety, firefighters, police, and all those that, that serve and, and lost their lives that day, but um, just unified a, as, a, as humans, as human beings around such a tragic event. The Attleboro Council on Aging recently received a grant to provide a free Wi-Fi service for seniors in the community. We spoke with two of the senior staff members to learn more. Hi, my name is Melissa Tucker, and I'm the director here at the Larson Senior Center, and I'm here with I'm Sharon Rice, I'm the Assistant Director. And um, we're here to talk about our grant that we have through Community Health Systems to provide free Wi-Fi service for seniors in our community, um, sort of to conquer the digital divide. The Senior Center realized that um, during COVID that there was a huge digital divide with seniors, particularly older seniors. Um, and one of the profound and lasting changes that COVID has made for uh, the senior population is the world has gone online. And seniors are just not equipped, many seniors are not equipped to go and 
you know, renew their license online or their car registration or order CPAP supplies or their drug medications or even do a doctor's visit. Uh, they don't have access to the technology. They don't have the knowledge. So the center went about um, developing a three-pronged project, I guess, uh, to address this need. So um, many seniors now had to transfer from flip phones to iPhones and smartphones, um, and they don't know how to use them. So we developed a program where they can come in and, and sit down with someone for 50, uh, 30 minutes um, and get one-on-one -on -one tutoring on that phone. Um, we also have a computer program class where people can come here free of charge and learn how to use a computer. They can learn how to navigate the internet safely, um, use different programs, learn the basics. Um, and the third and probably most vital component is that we had to find a way to give our seniors affordable access to, to Wi-Fi. Um, you know, many, personally, I pay $100 a month, and that's a lot for seniors to do. Uh, there are some cheaper options, but for many, it's just out of the possibility. They're being squeezed with rent increases and um, cost of living has just gone through the roof. So we reached out to the Community Health Systems Foundation and uh, wrote a grant to provide free internet access to our seniors. And they thought it was a great idea. So we've been doing it for about three months now. So the, the HubSpot is a simple device. It's plug and play. And, you know, we can walk seniors through that. We have 50 devices. Um, we currently have about 25 of those out right now. Um, and there's, again, just a simple form we ask you to fill out and um, sign it out basically like you would a library book. Obviously, um, you know, they have to be able to find this device on whatever device they're using. So if they're using their phone or their laptop or um, a Chromebook or whatever device, it's simple, you know, they search for it, it'll show up on their device and then there's just a simple password and hopefully they should be hooked in. And, and we're always available for, for seniors if they need, need an extra hand. So another grant, which was through Bristol Elder Services, helps us pay for an, ins an instructor that offers computer and phone classes. So if seniors need an added lesson on a particular matter that they're having trouble with. We have Steve Walsh who is helping us instruct our seniors on, on the comp complications that they run into. They can call us here at the center and, or they can just walk in and staff will sign them up for this program. The Attleboro Area Council for Children recently received a generous donation of books from the UPS store in North Attleboro. The books will be distributed through the Christmases for Kids program. We spoke with the owner of the UPS store. My name is Joanne Peterson. I'm the owner and operator of the UPS store here in North Attleboro. Uh, we've been here about 24 years we're going on. The UPS store, as a national organization, had partnered with the Toys for Tots literacy program back in 2008. And since that time, they have collected over $8 million and they've distributed 40 million books throughout the country. Donations are made here at the local stores and then we're able to use that money right in our local area. So thanks to the contributions of our customers, we were able to raise $2,600, which bought about 1,800 books. We partnered with the Council for Children because they're a great organization to be able to do the distribution of the books through their Christmas is for Kids program. We all know that reading is critical for children to be successful. So it's a great way to just give back. My name is Kelly Fox and I'm a board member with the Attleboro Area Council for Children. And we were so excited to be able to receive a gift of 1,800 books for our Christmases for Kids program. As anybody who has been at, involved at all in Christmases for Kids knows, we try to give at least one book to every child, but this gift in particular will allow us to give at least two books to every child. And it's so important that children have books and that they're reading and that this is, gives them a chance to explore new stories and new concepts and increase their vocabulary. Reading can't be understated in terms of how important it is and so this gift in particular really means a lot to us. 
The Council for Children has been around for over 30 years and although most people know us for Christmas is for Kids where we do take care of about a thousand children every year with new toys and new clothes at Christmas, most people don't know some of the other things that we do. For example, we've just finished donating 200 plus backpacks to local school departments so that children will have the backpack and supplies to get started for school. But we also give backpacks between 75 and 100 every year at the beginning of the summer so that children who are in the park and rec department um, summer camp programs can have a water bottle and sunscreen and a beach towel in a backpack and a lot of what we try to do is have kids feel like they're just like all their friends. One of the things we love doing is a food drive at the beginning of the summer and we collaborate with the Food and Friends Pantry. The most important thing I can do is say thank you. Thank you to Joanne and her crew. You know, thanks to you and AACS, we wouldn't be able to get this information out to our community. And mostly thank you to the volunteers because if they don't show up, none of this gets done. Earlier in the summer, the Rotary Club of Attleboro coordinated with the Attleboro Public Schools to donate to leftover supplies from the old Attleboro High School building to schools in Panama. Emily Talentino, Executive Director of Give and Surf, based out of Bocas del Toro, helped to organize the reception and distribution of those resources. She recently gave her presentation to the Attleboro Rotary. We spoke with her to learn more. I mean, a huge relief. You, right now, especially with international shipping logistics, you just never know how long it's going to take, what it's all going to, you know, take to get it down there, when it's going to arrive. And so to have it have arrived and been unloaded last Friday is just unbelievable to have the whole community show up, the Ministry of Education and teachers, the local hospital, the local Rotarians, um, kids, the Give and Surf team, all helping to get it done in a real quick period of time. Um, logistically on the islands, everything's just challenging because not only are you dealing with international shipping logistics, but then getting to customs, which is a 14 hour drive from where we are on the islands, and then ferry schedules and what they, the ferries running and strikes that have been going on in Panama. There were a lot of different logistics and it all happened and worked out. Um, as I said, you know, a lot of resources stay in Panama City. We're, we're pretty isolated islands out on the Caribbean side um, with very limited government resources. So even the brand new hospital that we had that opened a few years ago, half of it sits empty and unused because we don't have the supplies and the training to, to open it. And so there were several pallets uh, worth of supplies, gloves, masks, gowns, other hospital equipment that benefited the local hospital. Um, the Ministry of Education, so there's several elementary and the high school uh, public schools that benefit fitted from all the desks and then given serves five uh, educational centers so three after school programs and two preschool kindergartens received all of the materials and then all the extra stuff that was put on so clothing donations pack and plays high you know there's smaller communities that have significant needs so the community leaders help identify which families have the biggest needs and getting those those donations to those families I was so nervous not being able to be there I'd already planned to be in Massachusetts and um, but everyone came through uh, and was there uh, and did it in a real quick quick turnaround and was super happy with the donation. So it's been at least, I visited once since I was back, but it's been at least five years. Um, but to see the, the, the outpouring of love, the welcomes, the familiar faces, and, and know that everyone chipped in to help the community where I'm living is just heartwarming and, and humbling. Jeff and I at one point had talked about if we could get a group of volunteers from the Attleboro Rotary Club down to help with the unloading, but then we realized the logistics of not knowing the window of when it would arrive uh, was just not feasible, but in terms of Having folks come down and visit and potentially volunteer or help with a project would be awesome or just to see the community. Um, you know, Don Pierce and I have talked on and off over the last few years about dental programs because there's huge needs. Um, so I think depending on the interest, you know, I love staying involved and I, I like to come back to Massachusetts and, and visit, uh, you know, every year or two and see everyone. So I'd love to stay connected. Thank you. Route 1 Cinema Pub is an independent movie theater that has been open for over 20 years. They offer patrons a chance to watch a film while also enjoying a meal. Like many other industries, Cinema Pub was greatly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. We spoke with the owner to learn more. My name is Chris Ballerino. I'm the owner of the Route 1 Cinema Pub. Uh, we opened in um, February of 1999 and we stayed open right until we were at, um, met, met to close by um, when the pandemic came out, before 
the pandemic, we were always called a sub-run theater or a, a clearance theater, which means once Showcase got rid of them or the cleared Showcase, that's when I got to play them. Before the pandemic, I never played a movie that was streaming, and now I've reopened for five months and I haven't played a movie that isn't streaming. So it's kind of totally the opposite. What happened with the pandemic was um, between the streaming services, the theatrical windows, and the lack of product, there's just nothing to push movies out of the major chains for the smaller independents and the smaller chains. So basically what they did when, when these reopened up after COVID is they got rid of clearances. So basically everybody's allowed to play whatever they want, whenever they want, um, unless you're unlucky enough to be uh, in the same town as Showcase, which kind of blocks my avenue for product. Well, about a month ago, Warner Brothers gave us a kids movie called DC Pets. It's only the third movie that came out for kids this year. And they told this, um, Showcase that they were going to give it to us. And Showcase said, we're not going to play it. Now, kids movies are at a premium right now in the theater business. And every other showcase in the country had DC Pets on at least two screens when it came out on July 29th. And just to prove a point, Showcase North Adabo didn't play it when every other showcase did. So I commend Warner Brothers, but I can also see why the other studios don't jump on board if Showcase is going to tell them we're not playing with him. They call it day and date. We have like a pub style menu. We have pizzas and burgers and fish and chips, a lot of salads, all the basic stuff, you know, the ice cream and the candy. And then we have the cheese sticks, chicken fingers, stuff like that. So we pretty much have a wide variety of things to choose from. And we just went up in the price from $8 at nighttime to ten dollars to try to be more in line with the bigger chains in order to try to get the new movies it's only been about a month so far so we're still going to see how that works out i was very lucky um, i got about 90 percent of my staff back that um that was off for two years um, i tried to keep my two main guys on the payroll as long as possible with a lot of help from the um from, from grants and other stuff from the government um, so i got them all back most of my wait staff and most of my kitchen staff so i was very lucky because you do see a lot of places closed down with signs that say can't get help um, et cetera, et cetera. so i got very lucky we're on facebook we're on instagram and we have our own website www.cinema-pub.com which is always updated with the new movies and the schedule and stuff like that i hope that they enjoy the experience i hope they like the food you know it's kind of a thing where you can come in here have you know a soda and a burger and you can buy a ticket for the same price of going to a, a chain and getting a ticket so it's a lot more economical for especially for a family to come here that's all for this week's edition of attleboro update from everyone here at double thank you for watching